Hello, I'm uh, Malte Brinkmann from Berlin Humboldt University and um, I want to give you an insight uh, in our researches on practicing. Um, I prefer the German or the Norwegian word Uwilse because it comes nearer to um, the problem, the issue I want to describe in my lecture now. I called it, called it practicing the practice and I claim that there is a proto-reflexive structure in practicing. Um, I want to uh, try to give some insights uh, in the practicing theory and the practicing of practice. So I will start with an uh, example and then I will come to some points um, that come that lead to a theory of practicing and afterwards I will give some insights and some points uh, to the didactics of practicing. Okay, I will start and then I will show perhaps what it's meant by phenomenology. It's a description of this practice and it uh, tries to get nearer to the experiences in practicing as a special form of learning. So the example is bicycle, bicycling. I did it with my son. He is uh, three and a half years old in this time and initially it works good without precise instructions. He already knew a lot about cycling because from op observation he knew what is works. He was already able to do a lot because he was already trained to keep his balance with his bike, a small bike without pedals. And then um, I put in the first time on the bike and he did it quite well. But he was on the one hand very proud about his step towards more independence and above all more speed. The other children looked at him and compared themselves with him. Oh, he can already ride a bicycle, they said. I can do that already better than him and so on. But despite of all these previous experiences, despite of um, his previous knowledge and skills, he was not able to fully control what was happening. For example, he could not brake yet. Also, he could not estimate the speed and adjust his angle of vision and braking power to it. So that he often unvoluntarily went off the bike. He fell over, drove against uh, some obstacles and so on. But that didn't stop him. Stopping climbing again up, keep on practicing, however, the, however these experiences of failure left of obvious traces, scratches, for example, tears, rage at the hard object standing in his way. But in these experiences he learned, he practiced bicycling. So now he can ride a bicycle as good or as bad as most children of his age do. However, these are still situations in which he is faced with new challenges such, 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 such as riding tight bends or riding particularly fast or particularly slowly. So in this example we can see um, crucial attributes of pedagogical practicing and um, I will use it not only in concern of learning or practicing bicycling. I will point out, the, out these main features and refer to the traditions of Bildung and didactics and then I will examine some aspects of practicing in more detail. This practicing, not only practicing bicycling, will perhaps come up these experiences of practice, uh, practicing, I have to say, uh, come up when a student is asked to fulfill a writing task, dribble a basketball, 
learn, learn vocabulary, solve a mathematical modeling task, or comply with the social rules of a discussion group, m they might be uh, aware of the formal roots, rules of each of them. They know how to dribble, know how to paint, know how to discuss, know that concentration, patience, and attention are important to do this, but they cannot apply these skills and abilities. They have to practice them. Some applies to blitz chess players, doctors who perform heart procedures, teachers who uh, spontaneously react to a difficult classroom situation. These are examples of practicing. So practicing is a praxis in the Greek sense. A praxis, for example, a special task in the spe specific uh, form of learning. In other words, practicing is a praxis which is focused on skills and being able to f perform better. Within practicing and by practicing, skills, attitudes and abilities are cultivated. I say here cultivated, they are uh, even uh, perfected, but in the pedagogical sense I would prefer the word cultivation. We are practicing something to be able to perform this, perform this specific activity in a more cultivated, aesthetic or elegant way. Within practicing, conscious ability, that means knowing how, and skillful knowledge, that means knowing that, are combined. We only practice that we cannot perform directly by decision or will and for which knowledge, insight or cognition are not sufficient. Practicing is based on experience and praxis. Ability develops from the praxis of repetition and intentional acting. Practicing takes place when we perform the same action which is actually one to praxis. That means we practice um, bicycling by doing bicycling. We practice uh, learning vocabulary by learning uh, uh, vocabulary. Only in doing, in this praxis, in applying, we can learn these practical skills and abilities and even attitudes, I will point out later. The past taught is, is a repet repetitive practicing. Within practicing, implicit knowledge as a practical ability is primary. And then secondary, it is verbally explicit and formalized in knowledge. Within practicing, knowing how in the mode of knowing that and knowing that in the mode of knowing how are combined somehow. In addition to this, practicing is a form of learning which aims at continuity and permanence. It is characterized by this state of repetition. We practice something if we want yet not able to perform the intended, uh, intended skill or ability. Also when we are disappointed or irritated, when we fail and we try again. This is a very important thing. You know, this, uh, my son who was practicing bicycling, he makes experiences of not knowing how or not um, knowing that. So he can't drive bike, he has to practice this. So we call it this disappointment, uh, falling down and so on, we call it uh, with the term of negative experiences. I will come to it later. With this practice, within practicing, we thus not only acquire a skill or ability, we also refer, reflect ourselves in practicing. So, we say the, the person who is practicing is changing his or her horizon his identity or his self-image. It's challenged, challenged by failure, challenged by this not knowing how, challenged by non-abilities and the new efforts that go along with practicing. So 
the practicing is in, uh, constituted on the one side by continuity, on the other side by discontinuity. On the one hand side by knowing how, on the other side by not knowing how. Okay, these are some, these were some attributes. Now I come to the underestimation of uh, practicing in the Western world. I think that usually both in theory and in practice, in school practice for example, um, practicing is underestimated and misidentified as a, as a drill, as a dull form of learning, as disciplining the, the pupils and the students. Often we don't have any notion of um, practicing in theories of uh, educational studies, Bildungstheory or uh, psycholo uh, theories of psychology, even in didactics it's the same way. This is something else in the Asian context. The, the Western call it the paradox of the Chinese learner and I am uh, often in China and, ca and can see it. They practice in a repetitive way and even though they do it in a repetitive way, they are able afterwards to solve very hard and reflective uh, tasks. So they have a deep level approach um, in practicing. This is under the, in the Western perspective, a paradox. They call it the paradox of the, Ch of the Chinese learner. So they practice in a repetitive way and they find the reflection, the deep level understanding in this repetition. Um, in the Western perspective, this is not understandable. But in, uh, I come now to the German didactics, but somehow it's uh, in an um, European uh, context as well, the same. We uh, have since some time, since perhaps 10 or 20 years, um, some notion of intelligent practicing that means that the practicing is coming back in foreign language didactics, in mathematic didactics, in training science, sports or didactics of music. And they see that they try to find authentic tasks in authentic situations so in contrast uh, to traditional calculating tasks, practicing within mathematical modeling tasks, it is seen as a reflective, flexible and connecting to practicing way. Within the concept of this task-based language approach to teaching and learning, intelligent practicing formats in the didactic or foreign languages are applied as well. So in mathematics, or in uh, foreign language didactics, there is a new attention on, uh, on practicing. Another interesting form of practicing formats can be found in the educational standards for the subject ethics. They are developed by Dietrich Benner and they uh, tried to combine in this task a judgment and a reflection in the perspective of building. They are, can be seen as um, tasks in the practicing perspective as well. And um, so this intelligent practicing is demanded, measured and evaluated as well in the um, mathematics, in ethics, in sports and in um, uh, foreign language. So uh, there is a challenge to create a theory of learning and to come away from this misunderstanding but I think misunderstanding in the European culture but I think um, there is not a general theory of practicing uh, developed in this mo moment and I try to uh, give you some insights of this theory um, I developed. Um, I will uh, do it in this five points. 
and um, try to come nearer to this phenomenon of uh, practicing. Um, first, I try to differentiate systematically three dimensions of practicing. First, we can say um, practicing is an embodied uh, thing what, what, that we do. We practice, that's really easy to say, but perhaps hard to understand. Practicing is a praxis, it's something we can do. It's not based on a reflexive, a reflexive form of consciousness. It's not only thinking, it's doing, doing something, doing with our body. So even if as we uh, practice mathematical skills, we have to do something. We do it with our body and when we observe uh, um, pupils in classrooms, we can see it. They, the tonus is changed, they are concentrated, the body language is something else is changing and so on. Secondly, this practice is situated in the world, in the living world. So we do it in, in horizons, in contexts, in institutions, and in this institutions some tasks arise. And these tasks often are complex skills we are practicing, like arts, sports, technical, intellectual kinds, like chess playing, calculating, understanding, or thirdly, individual attitudes and stances. That means we can practice something, for example drawing or bicycling, and in the same moment we do not only practice this bicycling, this contact tense, we in the same moment we practice the attention, the concentration on this task. So individual attitudes are practiced as well. In the same, the same um, context, we can say attention or concentration or discipline or um, some, um, um, some way to deal with uh, irritations, disappointments or failures can be practiced not in an intellectual way. So it's, uh, f in my uh, opinion, there's no sense to, to, uh, to practice attention um, just doing, just saying by instruction what is attention. Then the pupils know what attention is, but they can't, uh, they can't, they, they can't uh, have, they don't have the skill to uh, be attentive. To be attentive, they have to do it as a practice, so they need something which is um, practiced. So we have a triangular structure of practicing. We practice something, uh, a certain matter, a content, like um, bicycling. And in this moment, we, we are practicing a method. Method is here meant in the Greek way uh, called the way we do it. It's not only a methodology meant as a methodology, it's just a way we come near to it. So when we practice bicycling or vocabulary, we are practicing in the same moment a way coming near to get this knowing how. So it's a methodic uh, perspective. And thirdly, we practice ourselves. Practicing is a, Foucault would say, a technique of the self. This means in this practicing we are related to our self. How we see ourselves, how we see and perceive the others, or how we perceive um, and see the things. And perhaps this relation to the self, this is a perspective of Bildung, makes the practitioner able to change his horizon to change his perspective, to change perhaps his self, to become another person. So practicing is not only practicing knowing how, it is in the same way practicing oneself, pra coming, uh, perhaps changing the horizon 
opening up for something else, opening up for the world, for another perspectives. So this practicing of the self can be seen as practicing some attitudes. And there we have the link to values and norms. We can also practice a valuable understanding or valuable communication with the others in the classroom, for example. Okay, so um, this is the triangular structure of practicing I try to present in a uh, merely formal way. I come now to four uh, points that are crucial for a theory of practicing uh, under the perspective of this ref uh, reflexive structure, of this structure which we call a uh, Bildung or uh, um, experience which is close connected to Bildung. Um, the first thing when we uh, look to the practice of practicing and the history of practicing, we see that it comes from the antique um, theory and the antique practices. Um, there it's, it's a Greek word, it's called ascesis. It's the same than in the Latin world, in the medieval ages, they called, they, they, uh, they, they called these, these practices exercitien. They are were done by the monks. And these exercitien, they show that practicing has, and perhaps has still, the function of disciplining. It's coming from discipline. And when we practice, we have to practice discipline as well. Uh, in pedagogy, this counted to the arsenal of black pedagogy, of discipline, submission, and so on. But on the other, on the other, uh, uh, on the other hand, we know that practicing needs limitation and uh, isolation. Why? Because when we organize a room, an educational space of practicing, we have to prepare this environment, to get off distractions, to try to help the practitioner to concentrate, to focus on something. So we get off this, try, we, we work against this distract, uh, dis, dis, uh, distractions. For example, we have um, school, uh, school rooms, classrooms um, with with some special things in it. Um, the architecture is a special arch architecture, the furniture is a special arch architecture, and we try some, uh, sometimes to get off these distractions to help the uh, practitioners to polarize on these tasks. So there have to be tranquility, there have to be time, they have to be perhaps a chance to repeat it again. All these are preconditions for the ease in practicing. The second perspective, so power, one point not, power is in this, uh, in this notion an ambiguous phenomenon. On the one hand we need it, on the other hand uh, it's near to disciplining and submission of the uh, pupils. So the teacher has to pay attention on this. They have to be careful. I will come back to this later on when I come to the didactics. Now uh, I will refer on the next point that's called negativity. That means not knowing how, making failures, ma uh, feeling disappointed or irritating. This is a crucial experience in, um, in practicing. Within practicing Perhaps this negative experience become visible and experienceable in the form of not being able to and not knowing, uh, missing the aim, forgetting, not understanding, misunderstanding, failure, failures, mistakes and so on. Within the negative experience a break appears. Suddenly the repetitive structure and the praxis is stopped. In this break, this can be conceived so strongly uh, as to make further practicing impossible. 
the person, for example, the student, pr uh, who is practicing gives up practicing. We have it often in schools. The negativity can, however, show the productive possibilities, the productive potential of practi practicing. This I will point out now. In research, educational studies, we, we, we know the alter uh, alteration of habits, opinions and stances is not possible without the observation, experience and orchestration of negativity. So, in the re recent years, negative experiences become a field of study in German philosophy of education, qualitative research and so on. And negativity in this way is not seen as an irritating, disturbing element of learning which has to be avoided. No, it is now regarded as a starting point for searching, researching, questioning and trying new ways of perception, reflection and acting. Within negative experiences, so perhaps relearning as re-practicing becomes able. So in this perhaps experiences, we reframe and rearrange our previous forms of knowing that and knowing how. So a change become possible. In this perspective, under a di didactical uh, angle, we can see unsolved problems, questions, wonder, astonishment can be seen as challenges for existing knowing that and knowing how. Errors, mistakes, irritations become highly positive and can seen as an open well, the, the, the possibility to open a space a scope within the repetitive practicing. So on the one hand there is this repetitive and continuous and the other hand is discontinuous and um, perhaps uh, in this break the productive possibilities of practicing appear. So um, then the third point, the lift body I, um, I said this before, that means that um, the uh, mm, practicing is in mostly done by the body. It's a practice we do. So this doing or saying, these are these practices um, are the, the main uh, perspective on uh, on practicing, so it is mostly reflective in vocational educational studies, but not only there. I, I mentioned in mathematics and uh, foreign language approaches as well. Uh, the last point, time, is um, m very important concerning and linked to this uh, point I made before the point of negative experience. Why? Because uh, on the one hand uh, practicing is aimed at this consistency and sustainability and this continuity. On the other hand the um, repetition is uh, stopped. It's braked by these negative experiences. And in this negative experience perhaps something uh, uh, appears that I call the temporal difference. That means in this temporal difference the repetition is not uh, uh, repetitively the same that reoccurs. It's not the same. It's something else. There is a change in it. There's a temporal deviation in it. And this temporal deviation means that changes are, pos uh, are possible. They though perhaps this temporal difference can reach the new within the old and in induce changes in views and perspectives. In another word, uh, within this temporal difference a transformatory uh, perspective, a transformatory element is um, appearing. A change is appearing and this change is not only a change of skills, it is a change of the person, of the horizon, the perspective and the identity of the person. 
So this might be the Bildungs sense of practicing that we are able to open up in the repetition for other forms of experiences, other, other uh, perspectives and other forms of skills. Okay, um, last but not least, I will come to my last point and this is the, uh, the didactics of practicing. Um, a didactic of practicing, as I understand it, has to deal with more than the shining lights of learning and education, like playful learning. Um, it has to address as well the strange, the difficulties, the problems, the weight of learning and the imposition, imp impositions of education. It therefore or has also dealt with educational aids and helps for learning in order to facilitate the transition from the state of not yet being able to to the state of being able to do something. Negative experiences and learning obstructions are to be regarded positively in this perspective as they are experiences of obstructions which are connected to everyday tasks because one is not yet able to do what one first has to learn and to practice. The social change as well as the economical and medial acceleration in our times stand in contrast to the inherent logic of acting in the school environment. The Greek word skole originally meant meant free time, leisure. School as a place of available time and leisure makes possible a form of learning which is free from the direct influences and demands of society, economy and politics. On the other hand, it is driven by power and not totally free. But it is a room where uh, it, the students are able to learn. They need time and tranquility. Processes of learning do not get along with the pressure of acceleration, the demands for innovation and, and efficiency. Learning and education have their own speed and rhythm, their own time. It can expand and st stretch in boredom or uh, contract and shorten in past time. Practicing differs from learning in that it is repeated, but it also differs from repetition in that the temporal differences, di 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 the temporal difference within the negative experience is specially thematized. Every teacher certainly knows this set situation. You give a repetitive task but want to introduce something new at the same time by encouraging the students to apply the already known to the unknown. The teacher firstly has to determine determine the range of the transfer in order to generate a, scar, a task which is still solvable. The special form of task is thus repetitive yet changing at the same time. Repetitive and reflective practices do therefore not contradict each other. Each of them deals differently with the repetitive structure of practicing. The temporal difference is being used to evoke deviation and transfer within steadiness. Therefore, practicing needs time. Time to step into distance with oneself, remember and try, time for attentive concentration and polarization. Students who are practicing also need time to deal with disappointments, mistakes. To with the unknown and the non-abilities. From a didactic point of view, the negative moments of disappointment and lack of remembering are of specific importance within the practicing. However, this is not because they enforce result and perfection oriented investigation in the light of mistakes and failure. They are of importance because they are positively enable productive uh, practicing. With other words, only if as a teacher know, I as a teacher know what is yet not yet an ability and what is not yet known, I can give irritating tasks 
to promote learning and practicing. The benefit of the ex uh, uh, negative experiences is its ability to open a scope within practicing, within repetition, which creates openness, reflection and variation. For a didactical perspective and for research and teaching, this means operations of deceleration and slowing down are equally important as operations with focus on negative experiences and mistakes. Okay, I come to the end. Conclusions. What uh, we cannot just practice, we always practice something. Something as a skill, a subject, a matter. A self-referential practicing of practicing itself it is equally empty and devoid of sense as, as learning of learning or breathing of breathing. We need a subject matter. It is always something that is practiced, learned, breathed. Along with these skills, abilities are developed through practicing, which they then can form into a certain attitude. A student focusing on and polarizing a task also practices attention and frustra frustration tolerance along with the task itself. The repetitive, interruptive and transferring confrontation with these experiences enables change and transformation of habits um, and the rep repetitive and interruptive reflection of habits can lead to a transformation of first order habits, how to say, which are built in socialization and interaction into second order habits, that is intelligent habits or um, attitudes. Attention, discipline, critique and ambiguity tolerance can be seen as intelligent habits or attitudes. With these, the person practicing can again relate in an explicit way to, uh, to his one self-relation as an attentively, self-disciplinary, critically and ethically acting person. Transfer, in a didactical perspective in this sense, is much more than a mere teaching technique. It relies on the repetition of practice within intelligent practicing in which habits are practiced anew and reshaped in which attitudes are formed. Thank you very much for your attention. You see here some links you can use and you can read some more information there or more text from me. If you have more question, questions, please write me. Here you see my email. Thank you very much.